So we, we certainly are living in uh, highly unstable times and uh, the reputation of the whole of the financial sector around the world has been tainted and of course communication is key now to, uh, to try and restore it. Uh, what do you think should uh, leading financial centers and also emerging financial centers do to uh, try to turn this, um, if we want to use a sort of a business expression, if you want to turn a challenge into an opportunity? Well, yeah, well I, th I think one of the things that, that all of us who are sort of doing centers or if you will is we're, we're sort of like uh, the bridge in the middle and should be the bridge in the middle in, in many cases um, because it, I've talked about that partnership and, and I think we need to be able to articulate the value of a strong financial center to the economy and to individual citizens in our countries and jurisdictions. Um, secondly, we need to try and be for government and regulators perhaps a little bit like a not quite an independent broker um, because you know there's many government relations firms and associations that, that do their work but try to give a bit of a almost an independent voice about because you're hearing from a financial institution don't regulate this or don't regulate that because it'll be bad for our company we need to sort of set ourselves up the kind of credibility where government can turn to us and say, well, is this really going to impact on the growth and the jobs? You know, is it just whining from the industry or is there really an issue here? Because um, I think we can add a benefit to that because our mandate is growth. Uh, it is, uh, you know, and, and, and for, for our particular group, um, very much uh, our niche, if you will, um, is trying to focus on issues that do drive or hinder the growth of the sector and the jobs of the sector. So that's a message I think that, that all of us should be taking to government and equally. Are you taking it to government? And Certainly, yes, we do. Yeah, 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 we do. Are you all taking it yeah. to government? And what is yeah. the response you're getting? Well, um, a, uh, a response of uh, wanting to be able to um, uh, positively become engaged, I think, for the long term and not be, I'm quite interested in the views of others who are in the same situation uh, as me because I add the, the role that we play is definitely around the growth of the sector, attracting players, uh, a new participants into the sector, but continuing to build uh, the capability and capacity of our sector in Australia and that comes not just from jobs but it's also the types of skills and experience that you can introduce into that sector uh, to, to keep growing it. So on the one hand uh, there's a definitely an understanding um, in, in the Australian market that, that long-term regulation that brings certainty, reduces complexity and cost, um, supports business is important and then you've got the interplay, just to throw something on the table, of shorter term incentives and the roles that they play now, punitive um, uh, charges on new taxes for example have have uh, a negative response to market potentially and we've certainly seen some of the flight uh, types of discussions. I, I'm not sure what the numbers actually look like. On the other side you've got some of those shorter term incentives on how you actually attract companies in um, and ultimately um, we've got certainly in Australia on three year terms politicians that need to make shorter term uh, decision uh, and, and outcomes and results um, but we're actually looking for longer term participation because it's actually not a win for our community or economy to have a company come in, set themselves up, um, look all glossy and successful and then 12 months later have to pull mm -hmm. out because it didn't actually, the reality um, was not what was presented. And so a lot of the initiatives that we discuss with government but also with the industry, I think that's the important conduit role that we can actually play these organisations that we're in is to um, manage expectations on both sides, is to try and put in place those sorts of programs and incentives that actually lead to long-term valuable growth in the sector as opposed to short-term gains because that's what we need. We need the long-term outcomes. So this sounds like a particularly challenging task to be carried out in these times and perhaps even more so in, in, in a jurisdiction like London. Well, um one of the challenges, uh, and we all know we face this, is that <clears throat> um, uh, regulators and, and politicians work to different timescales, mm -hmm. uh, and we we often and we have to recognise that that politicians aren't subject matter experts; they're generalists. They're there to listen to the to the, um, to the to be the voice of the public, to the will of the public. And if the public um, is seen to be pushing politicians to do more in terms of regulation, then politicians need to respond to that. So we, as an industry, we can say, well, this is terrible. We've, uh, well, what, a, what a shame we, that we've ended up with these politicians. Go and get us some more. Um, <laughs> obviously, the, the correct response is, well, how do we change the context in which politicians operate? 
So it's entirely for the industry to be saying, if we want to be taken seriously by politicians, then we need to be taken seriously by their voters, their electorate. Exactly. Um, in the UK, we, we employ over a million people in financial services, and, and two thirds of those are actually outside London. So that means that on every high street, there are people who work in financial services. Mm -hmm. uh, so those should be our greatest advocates. Those are the people who should be saying, we're not quite sure why there's another round of regulation coming. What, what's it trying to achieve? Um, and so what we're trying to do is ref reframe the discussion, actually by demonstrating the social usefulness of financial services through jobs up and down the high street. Not just in financial services, actually, but in those related professional services and then those people who we serve, because that's actually the 63 million people who live in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our, our first challenge is always to look at ourselves not to moan that we live in a political environment that's supercharged and overheated because of uh, the crisis that we've been through and the ongoing, uh, ongoing situations that we face and these terrible, terrible world events. The challenge is for us to, to be more attuned to what our customers need, need from us. And so that, that's how we're dealing with this. That's the program that we're running. It's very much grassroots, a much overused term, but it's grassroots up. Mm -hmm. We also have to help our politicians understand the social benefit through uh, through better explanation of, of the products and services that we offer. Mm -hmm. But the first challenge is, is, is with us. Uh, do you think that we are still in, um, uh, too close perhaps to, uh, to the financial crisis, to, to the uh, eruption of, of the financial crisis, to think about this in a purely rational way? Well, that's, that's, that's precisely the point. I think the, the, the idea is that as, as I think with the as common stream that's coming out is that we have a voice. And we play a very interesting role at the interface between the government, the regulators, and the industry. And uh, our, our mandate, most of us, as you will, is, 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 is uh, definitely uh, development, definitely growth, but also sustainable mm -hmm. growth and development. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's up to us around the table, at least in Qatar, what we're finding is that we're uh, increasingly being Increasingly, the governments require that sort of help. Uh, in, in, the, in the kind of the environment that we are in, where, where the amount of flux and uncertainty is so high, and as you rightly pointed out, um, the governments are not subject matter experts. And they probably need an independent sounding board, which is not industry, not the regulator, um, which, which can come out and sort of tell them that, hey, listen, this is what you're doing. And, not only like we were talking about, we talked about the coordination of the regulatory response across countries, but there's also the coherence of the regulatory response. Mm -hmm. We've, for example, we are coming out with Solvency 2 and we are coming out with Basel 3. And the interaction of both of these is going to create incentives and is going to impact on the allocation of capital by these very large entities and pools of capital. And I think it's also a little bit of our responsibility to more so than probably uh, say eight or ten years back to uh, use our voice and our mandate to be able to communicate uh, that coherence or to raise the right questions and say hey listen what is it that you're trying to mm -hmm. achieve and are you sure you're getting there with the policies that you're currently following mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's a very interesting place to be in right now because not a lot of organizations have that sort of independence and the position where they can actually provide uh, that input to the governments. Mm. I, I don't know. Steve, did you want to add something? Well, the, the financial crisis is of a different nature now than it was three years ago. At that time, we were concerned mostly by the mortgage market, especially yeah. in, uh, in America. Now it seems to be more a sovereign debt market, uh, sovereign debt risk, uh, with the impact it might have on banks, banks of continental Europe and other banks also that find themselves connected. So the counterpart risk again becomes very important because you want to know if a bank which apparently has a strong balance sheet is not necessarily exposed to a bank which is overexposed to one of those countries at risk. So again this creates a lot of uncertainty and anger at the population at large because they what do they see? They see the banking industry in three years' time facing different kind of risk and with the possibility of huge bailouts, taxpayer money coming to the uh, as a solution. Mm -hmm. So it's again an additional element of uh, communication that we must uh, manage is to give some sound, factual, 
uh, information to, to the people. And at the same time, like uh, Sally mentioned, we, uh, we have this discussion with the regulators, but we also be concerned. The regulation brings some kind of a, could say a helmet or a protective suit. It's more or less mm -hmm. a drag depending on the countries. But you also want to make sure that the person that wears that uh, protective suit is fit and is working in a mm -hmm. in an attractive environment. Mm -hmm. So that's where we, as centers, we can also be lobbyists uh, to ensure that on the national scene and in the Geneva case in the state or cantonal scene that we have attractive taxes for the company, attractive taxes for the people, that we have a security provided to people, that we have good schools for the international expat community, quality of life for spouses, and so soft aspects but hard aspects too, mm. because people, the, the, the international banking uh, community doesn't want to work in an environment where they might feel they are in some kind of a dead end. So you want to be connected to, to, to people who are professionals in their field, and all our centers here around the table do have this capacity to attract the best and the brightest. So there is a little internal competition between us, uh, but in our case, if I may say, it's limited maybe to the sectors where we believe we have a, a strong uh, position to defend, which is private banking, wealth management, mm -hmm. or commodity trade finance. Mm -hmm. We do not pretend to be uh, such a broad-based uh, banking sector than London or New York, for instance, uh, which offer a range of services that uh, the 35,000 people who are in Geneva in the financial industry, you mentioned one million in the UK, I mean, obviously you cannot be the jack of all trades, and therefore we decide to focus on where we have experience, where we have expertise, and, but at the same time, this dialogue, this dialogue and this lobby activities with the politicians to ensure that the business environment is very attractive.